I made this plant stand a while back and in the comments of that video, someone had asked if I could make a version without the angled cuts. I didn't wanna make the same version I've seen created over and over, so I came up with another idea. I have this garden stake, which I got from Dollar General. Now I know these are Dollar Tree DIYs, but it was still only $1, so let's pretend, okay? The stake measures 36 inches long, so I cut it down into four pieces at eight inches long. When I'm cutting wood that needs to all be the same exact measurement, I will cut the first piece and then use that as my guide, holding it on top of the next piece of wood. So you line up the ends of the wood and then pull the saw blade down slightly so when you slide the wood under, it will hit that top piece. Then you know that's where to make the next cut. This works so much better than measuring. Now this wood is not smooth, so once I cut my four pieces, I did sand them down. Next I taped off the bottoms of the stakes. I wanna give them a color blocked look, and I'm gonna paint the taped off section with black, with black velvet by DIY Paint. Turn these stakes into a plant stand. I'm using dowels and drilled a hole about two inches down from the top of the stake. I had to make sure I was drilling the holes in the right spot so that the plant would sit level. This was a little bit tricky doing it myself, but I would hold up the next stake where the dowel needed to go and I got out my little mini level to make sure I had it in the right spot. And then I drew a line and drilled the next hole. I'm using my wood glue super glue to attach the dowels and let that dry for about 15 minutes. This glue starts to set up pretty quickly and I did number each of the dowels and the holes so that I knew which ones went together. Now I was going to leave the top portion the natural wood color, but then I decided it needed to be a little bit darker. So I got out my special walnut stain and stained the wood. For the base part of the stand where the plant is going to sit, I'm using this Dollar Tree hat. These hats are super easy to take apart. You just find the end of the hat, which is along the brim, snip off the string, and then it unravels just like that. Now, one thing I've never seen anyone show when taking these hats apart is there is a clear thread, almost like fishing line, that you also need to remove. Then I'm going to start adding the hat ribbon onto the stand by wrapping it around two of the dowels. You wanna pull the ribbon pretty tight while wrapping it because there will be a plant on top which has some weight to it. And since I used wood glue, these dowels are really secure and not going anywhere. With each row, I slightly overlap the previous row and hot glued it to the dowel. After I completed the first section, I went around the second set of dowels in the opposite direction. I was going to make a weave pattern, but the way I hot glued the first section down, overlapping it a little bit, it wasn't gonna work unless I just started over. And there was going to be a plant on top, so I wasn't that worried about it. But this is going to help make the surface stronger, and that's it for this one. This project is so easy. You can make this in 10 minutes or less. I got this oval serving tray from Dollar Tree and wanted to turn it into a background shelf sitter for my bookshelf. 
I wanted to paint it and scuffed up the surface with a high 400 grit sandpaper for the paint to stick better, but also so I don't scratch the surface. Then painted the tray in cottage white by folk art and gave it three coats, drying it with my heat gun in between. That is what took up the most amount of time. And sorry if you can hear the rain, it has been pouring all day here. Next, I'm sealing it with my Dixie Belle clear coat. I'm going to add a transfer and it won't stick to just the painted surface. You have to seal it first. Now for the transfer, I wanted to try these ones from Dollar Tree on that brown paper. I heard they weren't as good as the other Dollar Tree transfers. So I cut out one of the flowers and then burnished it onto the tray surface. I'm not sure if these transfers were meant to be a little softer and worn looking, but that's how it turned out here. And I actually really like this look. It was exactly what I was going for. I did try this on glass as well, and it turned out perfect on the glass. So I think it just depends on how you use it and what surface you use it on. But either way, I liked it. Next, I took my bronze gilding wax and rubbed it on the edges of the tray. And that's it for this one. Like I said, super quick and easy, but I love how it looks layered in on the bookshelf. For this project, I'm taking a Dollar Tree hula skirt and I'm going to remove some of the raffia from the jute cord. I probably ended up using a third to a half of this skirt for this project. I took 12 individual pieces and tied them together with a knot at one end and then taped it down to my table. I'm sure you can guess what I'm gonna do next. We're making a braid. I think I ended up making four or five braids just like this. Next, I'm making nine more braids, but this time I'm adding in a wire inside of the braid. This is a 16 gauge wire. I thought about using the Dollar Tree floral wire, but wasn't sure if that would be sturdy enough. Once I had all of my braids, I'm going to bend the wired ones so they are straight on both ends, but the middle is curved. And I did that to all nine pieces. Then I'm taking this cement base from a Dollar Tree decor piece and using my Starbond super glue to attach the wired braids to the cement piece. Now you can see there's some glue on the cement piece. I tried adding the braids before I bent them and that didn't work. They would just pop right off when I would start bending. So I took them all off, shaped them how I wanted, and now I'm gluing them back on. Now I need a top because this is gonna be a lantern. So I grabbed a little wood circle that I have and glued the tops of the braids to the circle. I also have my mini level on top to make sure I glue these flat. After the tops are glued down, I snipped off the remaining braid. Next, I'm taking the braids that did not have wire in them and wrapping them around both the top and the bottom to cover up the ends. I wrapped the entire outside of the cement piece that was showing and also the top of the wood circle. You'll see there's a wood ring on top. I'm not sure where I was going with that, but it wasn't necessary. I just ended up covering it up with the braids. For the handle, I took another piece of the braid, glued it to the top like a loop, and then covered the ends with a half wood bead. And that's it for this one. For this one, I got this round MDF sign from Dollar Tree last year, and I normally try to rip the paper part off the front, but this one was really stuck well. So instead I got out my brown shipping paper and I covered the front. Okay, now we can start. I'm taking this beautiful floral napkin. I got this from Ikea. I love how it's a continuous design, not the same design on all four sides of the napkin. But I'm removing the back layers. This one is three ply, so we're removing two layers. Next, I wanna decoupage this napkin onto the circle. I started out using my liquid patina from DIY Paint, which is my new favorite decoupage medium. 
but because the MDF is so porous, the liquid patina just soaked right into the board and the napkin didn't stick whatsoever. So I got out the Mod Podge, which you can see right away, it is so much thicker. That worked, but after I got the first section down, I remembered I needed to paint the circle white under the napkin. Otherwise, you will see more of the brown MDF show through and it ends up looking pretty muddy. So I tore the napkin off and painted the board with two coats of gesso. Now let's try that again. I went back to the liquid patina, which worked much better this time. Right away, you can tell how much more vibrant the napkin is with that white underneath. That was certainly a rookie mistake here. The liquid patina dries pretty quickly, so it didn't take long, and then I was able to sand off the edges of the napkin. Next, I'm taking wood tumbling blocks and going to line the outside of the circle. I'm just using hot glue, but I would recommend using a stronger adhesive. The blocks felt pretty loose and not secure to the wood. Once all the blocks were on, I decided to whitewash them to tie in a little bit better to the napkin. I'm using Plaster by Waverly and dipping my brush into the paint then into the water and brushing it over the blocks. And then I'm taking a baby wipe to blend it all out evenly. While doing the whitewash, I realized even more just how loose the blocks are with the hot glue and had to reattach quite a few of them. Also, my power went out. So I only have the light from my window on the other side of the room here. Thankfully, we are almost done. And the last thing I did was take the ribbon from the hat and tied that around the middle of the blocks. I only glued this down in the back in case I decided to reuse these blocks since they're not very secure on here, but if you use a better glue, this is such a cute tray and I love it. 